Oh boy, here's a story for you. And I, I tell you about the Rougeau brothers. Um, Bret Hart said that a lot of the tag teams that had to spend a lot of time together and travel together started getting resentful of each other after a while. He said that him and Jim the Anvil Nighter never got resentful of each other. We never got tired of each other. He said even the Rougeau brothers got tired of each other. That's that. Now, what is it, 89, 90? 89 or 90, uh, Ray Rougeau said, I want to get out of this. I'm a little tired. I'm a little banged up. So he um, he would do he would do some interviews with American WWE, but he would also he would do um, French Canadian WWE um, play by play. Now see Canada is a little weird thing, and uh, so Jacques Rougeau became the Mountie. Now here's the thing, Mountie, you know, you, you know, it's great, it's great, it's wonderful, you know, well, he's a bad guy. He couldn't go to Canada. He couldn't, he couldn't wrestle in Canada because to, uh, roar, to imitate a royal mounted police in Canada was against the law. No, no freaking way, no freaking way. So he couldn't do it in Canada. And here's the thing, the, the PG era, the, the golden era, the G, almost G era, had one of the most un-PG era storylines of all time. 1991, it was Mountie versus the Big Boss Man. Loser spends the night in jail. SummerSlam. Hey, SummerSlam, huh? See, I put this together. Of course, the Big Boss Man won. So they dragged the Mountie off to jail. Mountie's in jail, he's screaming, he's crying, he's, you know, getting all excited. He's like, I'm gonna get me out here. He sees his prisoner in there. Prisoner's, he's like, well, I'll say something nice. And he's like, Hi, what you in here for? And the prisoner says, good times. <laughs> I mean, come on. A prison rape joke in 1991, that's just, oh my God. Guards, guards. So then, of course, he was he was Jimmy Hart the whole time. He got a little bit, just a little bit of, just a little bit of a, a thumbs up. In 1992, January, on a Friday, he beat Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship and. Brett had a 102 degree temperature, whatever the hell the storyline was. And then two days later, he dropped it to Roddy Piper, but he still got a little bit thing there. And then the Mountie got with another guy named John Pierre, John Pierre, whatever the hell his name was. They became the, they became the Quebecers. Now, why is that a big thing? Now, I'll tell you so. Back in the 90s, England, the language was a very big thing. Now I know you say, you know, you know, speak English, whatever, you know, you know, people say speak English, dumbass, you know, stuff like that. That's not nice. That's not nice. But here's the thing: in Canada, Quebec wanted to secede from the Union of Canada because of language, because of language. I mean, seceded. We've heard seceded says, "I ain't birthed with no babies." You know, since, you know, the Civil War. So, yeah, they wanted to secede from the Union just because of that. Of course, they couldn't go to Canada, you know. And then, oh, another thing. Uh, later, he had his own wrestling promotion. Hulk Hogan went down, went up to his wrestling promotion. And the Mountie, Jacques Rougeau, pinned Hulk Hogan. The rumor is that he paid him $10,000 to do it, but he pinned Hulk Hogan. So that's the story of the Mountie. And here's the song. I hope you enjoy the story. I'm, I'm smart. Written by Jimmy Hart. A Mountie. I'm handsome. I'm brave. I'm strong. I'm the Mountie. I enforce the law. You can try to run, but you can never hide. The Mountie always 
gets his man another journey. I'm a Mountie, I'm handsome, I'm brave, I'm strong. I'm the Mountie, and I enforce the law. You can try to run, but you can never hide. The Mountie always gets his man. Boy, there's another double entendre, isn't there, folks? Boy, you gotta love the golden, the golden age when things are PG.